In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the multi-plant capability of Planet Together. I've created a simple scenario here, and I'll walk you through it first. So, our setup is um, we have two plants. We have a San Diego plant, and we have a London location or plant. Each plant has its own warehouse, and what we're showing here are three jobs, each a different color. On the left-hand side, we've got the um, San Diego scheduling system, and on the right-hand side, we have the London scheduler. You can see down on the, on the bottom here which ones, which users logged in. So right away, you see that we are multi-user functionality. Each user has its own um, own software connected to the same instance. Um, simple. So um, the flow of the job works like this. We're making a car. And in San Diego, San Diego makes the engines, and London makes the car bodies and does the assembly. So when London needs to make a car, they're going to need to get an engine from San Diego. And obviously, there's some transfer time or time it takes for that engine to get from San Diego to London. Um, so the operations of the job look like this. We've got um, some inspection happening in San Diego, engine in inspection. Once inspection is done, there's some processing time for the engine to be packaged and ready for shipping. And then you'll so that happens on, in this case, on Monday the 15th. And as we go over into, into the London system, we see that the engine gets delivered on the 18th, so three days later. And you also see that the final assembly of the car um, happens after that engine is delivered and once the car body has been inspected. So there we have it. Um, that's a pretty simple scenario where, again, San Diego is making the engine, inspecting and shipping, and London is receiving the engine and then doing the final assembly of the pieces. So what I'd like to show you is what happens when schedulers are moving items around in their own instances um, and see how that affects the schedule. And Planet Together is a real-time scheduling tool. So um, what we should see here are real-time results. So let's take a look. Um, let's see. We're in San Diego, and this scheduler needs to push out this job um, to the 16th, the inspected engine. He does not have enough people. Something happened. It has to be pushed out a day. And what I'd like you to take a look at is um, what happens on both screens. So as I'm moving the job, and I should probably zoom out here to show you that this is uh, its own plant here. But as I'm moving the operation or job out one day, you'll see that my change has been reflected in London right away, instantly. So now where my engine ships on the 16th now, and still we have three days, so it gets um, delivered to London on the 19th. Now, same. Same goes for if I'm the scheduler in London. If I'm trying to make a change and I say, man, I could really use this part earlier. So let's see, I'll try to move it earlier. Doesn't let me. So that's the constraint of the system. We told it it takes three days, which is probably unrealistic for shipping to London from San Diego. But, um, you know, Planet Together keeps that three-day constraint. And so I'd like to touch on how um, how this was modeled um, a little bit more. I guess we can play around a little bit uh, with the compress options. Um, actually, that leads me into um, the different options anyway for the scheduler. So in each plant, each location, um, the schedulers have the ability to optimize and compress or in schedule just in their specific plant. And you'll see if I go up to the plan tab here and I look at my optimize options, the setting I have is plant shown in Gantt. So I'm only able right now to optimize my San Diego location. So if I do that, go up to plan and hit optimize, I'm not affecting anything over in London. I'm only moving things around in San Diego. Same goes for uh, in London. Let's move uh, this guy out a little bit so we'll constrain the engine delivery. 
if I'm in London and I hit optimize, I'm simply moving that engine delivery up just a bit because I'm able to, um, but it doesn't move anything on my San Diego schedule. So same goes for compress options and um, other features in the software as well. And I wanted to touch on how we made that uh, transfer time span. What we've got implanted together are something called resource connectors. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. I chose to use resource connectors, but essentially what we're saying is if we're going from the shipping resource in San Diego to the receiving resource in London, we're going to apply a transfer time to that. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like, we can look at our resource connectors dialog window and see that I'm going from shipping to receiving and I set a, uh, a fixed hours of 72 hours. If I change that to 24, save and close here. We're going to re-optimize on this side and then we'll re-optimize over here. You'll notice now that my I click on my engine delivery job in London, I'll see that my constraint here is now only 24 hours long. So I hope that gives you a little bit of overview of our multi-plant functionality. I guess I should also mention that uh, we do have a user, a user collaboration tool built into the software. So um, schedulers from each location have the ability to chat with schedulers in other locations. and. Um, now I'd like to touch on um, reviewing the inventory here. So we know we have an engine that was inspected in San Diego and shipped and an engine that was received in London and we have a car body that was inspected in London and we have a car final assembly. So let's take a look at the inventory. So I'll come up to my Windows tab here and view the inventory plan. and I have it popped out here so it's a little easier to see but we can take a look at the inventory in our locations you'll notice that each item has a warehouse so I know what's um, being stored in my London warehouse and I know what's being stored in my San Diego warehouse if I click on engine it'll, it'll show I have a quantity of two engines in San Diego <clears throat> and that on the 15th one of them was used for the inspect engine job. If we take a look at London, same goes for this. I had, I had two car bodies ready, um, ready to go, and one of them was used to uh, put the engine in on the 15th. And then if I look at my car final, this is my final good, uh, it'll show that uh, we didn't have any of them, but now at the end, uh, once that car was assembled on the 17th of February, uh, we now have one. So again, really simple, but lets you have that visibility into all the warehouses in Planet Together, um, all the on-hand quantities, all the adjustments, um, and what have you. So thanks for watching our quick video on multi-plant functionality. Um, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or contact us anytime. Thank you.